praying mantises are so named because of their pious looking posture. But these bugs are neither meek nor mild. They're voracious predators. This male mantis climbing up towards his potential mate can have little idea of the danger that he's in. Perhaps put off by the unwelcome advances of the male or simply driven by hunger, the female mantis begins to eat her suitor. Holding his upper body in her left claw, she starts to chew through his thorax. Until the two halves of his body are only held together by a thread of flesh. Eventually, his head drops away. But remarkably, this male isn't entirely dead. He's begun to impregnate her. The female has removed his head and with it the brain cells that control his inhibitions. But his abdomen has its own nerve cells. Cells that control the act of copulation and they allow him to pass on his genes even in the throes of death. In reproductive terms, this male has succeeded, but his death is a symbol of how strangely unfeeling the arthropod world can be. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked will be put out.
With much seductive speech, she persuades him. With her smooth talk, she compels him. All at once, he follows her as an ox goes to the slaughter, or as a stag is caught fast till an arrow pierces its liver, as a bird rushes into a snare. He does not know that it will cost him his life. And now, O oh sons, listen to me and be attentive to the words of my mouth. Let not your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths, for many a victim has she laid low, and all her slain are a mighty throng. Her house is the way to Sheol, going down to the chambers of death.